name of the Lord. Very happy to be with you on this evening. And pardon the uh, 20 minutes late, but if I could get rid of a telephone, I'd wouldn't be late. <laughs> you know, um, please, thank you, thank you for not charging me. That would that would end the day if you yeah. charged me. <laughs> We're going to pray and ask God to give us a great Bible study tonight, and yes. welcome to everybody if you're here for the first time. Do we have anyone here for the first time? All right, lift, uh, give us your name, child of God. Miranda. Miranda, yes. That, oh, I know you now. You had that cap on. I had a bad hair day. You better not help you. Uh, yeah, I know you now. And we have Ryan here. Thank God. This is Ryan's first time. And we're very happy to have Ryan. He's, uh, he's certainly a blessing to us to be wanting to become. I know his mom and dad's greatly pleased that he could be here. And we are too. So may the Lord bless everybody with good open hearts, open minds, and quickening in the spirit to his word this evening. And we're going to ask God to go with us now. And he knows about all the sick, the afflicted. And uh, we'll let him uh, know that we are concerned about each one and every one without respect to persons, to anyone, anyone, all of God's people. And our nation, our world, our government, all that there is, is therein in the world in which we live. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you would bless this Bible study. Oh God, give it strength tonight. Give it unction. Give it understanding. And lead us, Lord, in the path you would have us to go. And let our minds be quickened. Thank you for this wonderful attendance on Monday night. And Lord, I thank you for bringing your people together. I thank you for giving them grace and understanding. And um, the Lord, I thank you for working with each one, helping each one. Uh, Lord, I thank you for just being our Savior and our Lord and our God. And we pray tonight for strength uh, for each one, the sick, the afflicted, the downtrodden, the lonely, uh, those that feel lost, forsaken, those that are in dead-end streets of life. Uh, we don't know them. There's millions. Uh, that we don't know all the people of God that have problems tonight, but we do know that we can call on the name of the Lord, and the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And we ask and we pray, Lord, that you would let each one that are troubled tonight run into that name, into that place, into that refuge of the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is all powerful in heaven and in earth. We thank you for the Father, we thank you for the Son. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray tonight that our minds will be purged, our spirits will be clean, and we will offer up a sacrifice and offering to you that will be accepted, and we will grow in wisdom and grace and knowledge in this Bible study tonight. Go with us, Lord Jesus. We're helpless. We can't do anything. All glory belongs to you. If someone learns, if someone receives, from your word, it's your glory. It's you that gives that to them. We, we have ask no glory. We seek no glory. We're only vessels to impart the word of God. Go with us now in the troubled day we live in. Oh, God, watch over us tonight. Watch over every house, every home, every one of the children of God. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. And everyone said, praise the Lord, and amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. amen. Last week, uh, we, were, we were dealing with the kingdom of God and its expression in the scriptures. And Lord, we, we hope that tonight we can just uh, absolutely um, go into another part of the scriptures and we can learn. Uh, last week we were in uh, uh, Mark 1, 14 through 15. The kingdom of God is at hand. 
So we'll start there, and we'll go from there. All right, everybody ready? Everybody ready to get your Bibles out now and and uh, be uh, ready to progress in the Word. All right. Mm -hmm. Mark 1, and let's go to the 14th and 15th verse um, of Mark. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right, Mark 1, verse chapter, and we'll start there. Uh, it, this is a class, and it's open for input. Uh, slip up your hand if you have a thought or a question, you don't understand something uh, that we're saying. Uh, slip up your hand. We'll, uh, if we can't answer it, we'll say everybody pray and seek God for the scripture. Mark the first chapter and the 14th verse and the 15th verse, all right? Uh, well, let's take 13, uh, verse 12 and verse 13 and verse 14 of Mark, the first chapter. Scripture said, And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Jesus, of course. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with a wild beast. I don't know if you ever noticed that or not, but that, that's, that's a, a thought right there. He was with the wild beast. He was in the wilderness. He was in a place that I don't think I would want to go, and you would want to go, and I don't think he would have wanted to go, except to fulfill the scriptures. And that had to be fulfilled. He was with the wild beast. It must have been very deep in the wilderness, animals roaming around him, and uh, they were wild. And they could have um, devoured him, but that was not God's will. And the angels ministered unto him. Uh, now, Matthew said the angels came and ministered to him when he finished uh, the temptation. Um, and I, I don't think Mark contradicts Matthew. Uh, what Mark does is give an abbreviated... Um, version of him being tempted in the wilderness. Matthew covers it in detail, but Mark, he just cuts through and he said he was in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan, and he doesn't give the temptations as Matthew did. Now after that, verse 14, John was put in prison. Jesus came unto Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. He didn't say the kingdom of God was there. He said it's at hand. It had not arrived. It was coming. It was going to be. But the kingdom of heaven had arrived because Jesus the Lord of heaven and he was there yeah. the kingdom of God the complete dominion of the earth the complete dominion of his crown <laughs> king of kings and lord of lords had not yet come to pass and so he said the kingdom of God the king's domain that's what the kingdom of God means the king's domain that's where the king will rule that's his domain it was not there yet. He said, it's at hand, it's coming. That's what he was saying. Uh, Repent ye and believe the gospel. Um, and uh, look at uh, Matthew 19, 23, and 24 to match this. Just go back to Matthew. You're near there. Uh, Matthew 19 and 23 and 24. And here in Matthew 19, 23 and 24, Jesus is encountering uh, the rich young ruler. And after the rich young ruler could not obey what Jesus gave him to do, in verse 22, 
of Matthew 19. But when the young man heard that saying, well, let's take the saying above it. We'll know what it was saying. But Jesus said unto him, verse 21, if thou wilt be perfect, in other words, if you want to be completely set apart, sanctified, if you want to be in perfection when your love for me and my word, uh, go and sell that that thou hast. Because he was rich. He was rich. Jesus would not have said that to him if he had not been rich. But he was rich. He said, you go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now Jesus would not have demanded that of that young man because it's not a set teaching of the scriptures that if you have accumulated some riches or some treasure, if you'll do the right thing with that, you can keep it. But he wasn't going to do the right thing with it because he was proud. He was haughty. He even contradicted Jesus when Jesus said um, in verse um, uh, 20, the young man, Jesus said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These were the commandments that he was giving him. But look what the young man said in verse 20. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Read the spirit of that young man. He was rich. He was proud. He was haughty. And Jesus then came down on him hard. Uh, he said, all right, you feel that way. I can't tell you anything about honoring your father and mother. I can't teach you anything about not bearing false witness, not committing adultery. You feel like you've done these things from your youth up. Then Jesus just took him apart with this next verse. He said, if thou will be perfect, if thou will be, you think you're perfect, but if you will be perfect, if you're really going to be as you think you are, go and sell that that thou hast. Now, this is the final test I'm going to give you. Since you have all this and you think you've kept all these commandments, go and sell all that thou hast and give it to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, when he heard that, you know, that, that was a different uh, thing uh, all together and, thou, and he said he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions there's many many times people fail the test right there if they're willing to give everything they have to follow Jesus <coughs> everything they possess he isn't going to necessarily take it he isn't necessarily going to demand it uh, I don't think there's no teaching in the scriptures that tells us that. Um, we can talk about Acts where they sold their possessions at the feet of the apostles, but we'll have to get into that. You, you, you can misinterpret that. See, uh, Jesus did not teach what we call today a commune type of ministry where everybody comes in, everybody distributes all their goods to the religious order, and they themselves are poor. That doesn't bring godliness necessarily. No, sir. He starts with your spirit. He starts, see, he went back to this young man's spirit. He said, sell all that thou hast. Well, the greatest thing the young man had with all the, I don't know how much he owned, 40 acres, 100 acres, or how much money he had in the treasury of his, of his local bank or whatever, wherever he kept it. Jesus. That was immaterial. What he did have, he was rich in his spirit. He was so rich, and Jesus started there and sell all that you have. Start there. That's where you start. And, and if you want to be mature, perfect, an overcomer, be willing to sell your spirit. Uh, you know, take the old wine out of the old vessel and put new wine into a new vessel. Yes. So your spirit has to be new with your vessel. 
You can't sanctify yourself without sanctifying your spirit. Come on. Your spirit has to be the first thing that God works on and works with is to, to take uh, uh, these six things, Proverbs 6 and 16, Proverbs 6, verse 16, these six things doth the Lord hate. The very first thing is a proud look. It's even ahead of a lying tongue. It's ahead of hands that shed innocent blood. It's ahead of a heart that despises wicked mischief. Uh, and all those things. These six things does the Lord hate. A proud look. Um, so uh, this young man, he needed to sell that. But he couldn't. He went away sorrowful because he had great possession. Then Jesus gave the lesson in verse 23. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly, he didn't say he couldn't, he didn't say he wouldn't. He said it's, it's going to be very hard, hardly. It's going to be very strenuous for a man possessing great riches if he's proud, if he's haughty, if he feels like I've done it, I, I don't need anything. This young man felt he didn't need anything. He, he didn't need anything, really. He said, these things have I kept from my uh, youth. I, I, I'm, I'm all right there. That That is not a spirit that will ever allow me to be saved in my life. It's to look and say, everybody else needs something, but I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right. I, I have everything right. That spirit will lead me to destruction. Uh, a proud look, but if I'm humble and if I'm broken, and I'm willing to sell all that I have, including, first thing, my spirit, who I am, what I am, where I'm going, what I put, what I accomplish, what I impression I make, uh, personality, we call it. Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I'll say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. In Jerusalem, there was a gate. It was called the eye of the needle. It, was, it, was, it wasn't for normal traffic. Um, it, it was only for them to get in if they were small enough to get in, um, and uh, a camel couldn't get through it. Uh, a man could come out of the darkness and come into Jerusalem and get into the city, but he couldn't take all of his possessions. Uh, it, and Jesus used this. When we were in Israel, we saw where the, um, it's near the Eastern Gate there, the Eye of the Needle, um, the, the, the gate called the Eye of the Needle. Very small. You have to get very down, very low to get in it. It was only a, it's a preservation thing in case the gates were locked. They locked the gates of the city at a certain time. And uh, if there was an Israelite that was fleeing from an enemy or someone fleeing from a murderer, uh, they could get through, but they had to leave all their possessions outside. He said it's easier for a camel to go through that than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. He didn't say it was impossible. He said, I'm giving you a comparison. I'm showing you a comparison. Now notice he uses two different expressions here. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the kingdom of heaven, uh, it, Jesus used this, shall hardly enter to the kingdom of heaven. Then he said, it's easier for a rich man to get in uh, through the eye of the needle than for a man and for a, 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 for a rich than for a camel in it than for a rich man to enter in to the kingdom of God. I believe that the kingdom of heaven was what Jesus was talking about on the earth when he was ministering and it was the kingdom of heaven. It was a <clears throat> heavenly place when he was letting the leper be free, yeah. healing blind Bartimaeus, yeah. uh, the woman uh, getting her forgiveness, 
uh, all those miracles, the feeding of the multitude, that was heaven. That was uh, paradiso, the Greek word uh, for heaven is paradiso, meaning a restful, beautiful, park-like, serene place. Uh, that, that was what Jesus brought to the earth. Uh, the Bible said in the fourth chapter of Matthew, I believe it's uh, down toward the end of that chapter, verse 21, maybe 20, 14, 15, down toward the end of the chapter, uh, they which sat in darkness, but they which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light was sprung up. When Jesus came, uh, it was the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of the law was dark. Law made nothing perfect. Hebrews 7th chapter, verse 19, said the law made nothing perfect. The law of Moses, 1,500 years of the Ten Commandments and then 603 Levitical commandments. There were 613 commandments in the law. Ten of them was from Moses, and uh, the Levitical priesthood added 603 others, making 613 commandments for them to fulfill in the law. They couldn't do it. It was impossible. The law made nothing perfect, but the bringing of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God. Um, Jesus came, and the kingdom of heaven came taking the place of the kingdom of Israel or the kingdom of the law. But then he mentions the kingdom of God. Now, this kingdom, the kingdom of God, has to be the next kingdom set up. Um, let's go to Daniel right here uh, and, and see if we can pick up. Um, I just My mind just flicked over there. I hope I'm uh, right in, in using our, uh, where I want to go here. In Daniel, uh, the prophecy of Daniel, in Daniel, the uh, second uh, chapter, um, 